Hello, Calc. This is your moment, and it should be uh, you should be viewing this on after class on Friday, on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. So we're going to look at related rates again, and I'm going to train you a little bit more on the details. And it turns out that a derivative is a rate of change. So anytime you have anything changing, you can express it as a derivative. All of our related rates are going to be derivatives with respect to time. So dt will always be on the denominator. So if you have a problem that has wording like this, rate of change of volume, then the derivative that that one is talking about is d dv dt the change of volume with respect to time. Rate of change of volume would be written like a, a, as a derivative like that. How about this one? How fast, say the wording is, how fast is the area of the circle changing? So the derivative that that will call out to play is, see if you can get it before me, dA dt. And that's read the change in area with respect to time, dA dt. So try this one. How, how fast is the water level changing? So you get to choose the variable. Sometimes it's like the height of the water in a cone or some other cylinder. Uh, so we have dH dt, the height of the water, you could say dW dt, even depth can be used. I've seen dD dt, so that's also proper. All right, Let's see if you can name this one. How fast is the rabbit's weight changing? So when we're looking at that, we can say dW dt, the change in weight with respect to time. And you could use any variable there. How fast is the airplane's altitude changing? We could use dA dt just because we used A in the other problem for area. In this problem, it would represent altitude. How fast is the circumference changing? dC dt, the change in circumference with respect to time. And how fast is the price changing? That's talking about dPTT. <laughs> All right, so looking at those, hopefully that little bit of training will help you as we look at a real related rates problem. Great. Oh yeah, before I do that, a little more training, and that is there are certain equations that will uh, be useful in these problems. So I tried to think as many of them as I could and I'm sure there's a lot more but here's some of the main ones that you run into. Pythagorean theorem, volume of a sphere, sorry this is wiggly, area of a circle, tangent of an angle and uh, proportions on a triangle. This side is that. So I said uh, leg one is the base one as leg two is the base two. So that's going to be true if they're similar triangles. And volume of a cone, one third pi r squared h. I've also seen surface area of a sphere that comes to mind. And that is 4 pi r squared. All right, so let's look at the next, the actual problem here, and then I'll give you one to try. So, a snowball melts, changing the volume 2 centimeters cubed per minute. How fast is the radius changing when the diameter is 10 centimeters? 
All right, so when we talk about a snowball, we're assuming that it's a spherical snowball and the volume is decreasing because it's melting. And how fast is the radius changing? So we have to go for the question part, how fast is the radius changing? So from our training above, what derivative is that going to be? Well, we learned that it's going to be dr dt the change in radius with respect to time. So we're going to have to find that derivative when. It's always a when involved because the derivative is always different. Just like the slope of a curve is always different. So you have to know a specific spot or time where you, you are going to evaluate that derivative. And this is when the diameter is 10. But I'm going to rewrite that or rethink that as when the radius is 5. We almost always work with radii instead of diameters. So what is the equation that will relate all these variables? Well since it's sphere, it's a sphere and it's melting, it's that the volume is changing. So we're going to pull the volume um, equation out. A volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r squared. I'm sorry, cubed. All right, so as you've seen the other night, you do differentiate implicitly. So going from left to right, the derivative of v is 1. But the chain rule, because there's no t in any of these uh, expressions, we are going to have to, there's, there's, there's a r, there's a v, but you never see t in these expressions. So we're always going to have to add a, uh, use the chain rule and add a derivative right after each evaluation. So when we took the derivative of v, we get 1, but it's followed by dv dt as the chain rule requires. 4 thirds pi are constants, so they just sit out in front. The 3 runs down in front r squared, and again the chain rule, dr dt. Normally when we have an x we don't follow it by the derivative, but that's because we're, we're uh, differentiating often with respect to x. Here we're differentiating with respect to t, so all of these variables will be followed by some derivative with respect to t as the chain rule requires. So we're trying to find dr dt, so luckily it showed up in our work. And dv dt must be in the problem. So what's the change in volume with respect to time? In words, we see that it is 2. So, and I'll put a minus since it's, it's um, melting. Equals 4 thirds pi, uh, oh this 3, we'll cancel that. And now that we've taken the derivative, we can put in the r equals 5. This is just a snapshot when r equals 5. Solving that for dr dt, we get dr dt equals 100 pi on this side, dividing by 100 pi, minus 2 over 100 pi, which reduces to negative 1 over 50 pi. And that is dr, that is the, how fast the radius is changing when the diameter is 10. So this is a rate of change of, of the radius. So it's going to be in centimeters per minute. All right, so Hopefully you're seeing that this pattern just is repetitive, just with different scenarios and different um, relationships, but the same steps over and over. All right, let me leave you with one. Let's say that we have an oil spill, and it's a circular spot of oil, and the rate of spread
of the oil spill is three feet per second how fast so the rate of spread of the oil spill is three feet per second I wonder if that is uh, I can't read my writing let me just rate Hmm. Let's just say that that right here is the spread of the radius. So that's, uh, I can't read. So the rate of spread of the radius of an oil spill is three feet per second. So we're looking at a circular spot of oil in the water that's spreading quickly. So I want to know how fast is the area increasing when the radius is 30 feet. Okay, that's my timer, so that was good. I'm going to leave you with that problem. So you're going to have to come up with what um, derivative are we looking at or looking for and when. And you're going to find a formula that relates the variables in the problem. You'll differentiate it implicitly using the chain rule. And then you're subbing in all the values and for the things that are known and there should be one that's unknown solve for that all right good luck with that and have a great rest of your weekend and i will see you monday morning bye